what's going on i'm gonna walk you through peak pecan viewer real quick it's pretty straightforward but there's a few things that i'm gonna hone in on for better understanding um, to connect to a uh, network using peak pecan you're gonna click the available pecan hardware i'm gonna use one megabit for my bit rate i'm using my linux machine down here in the bottom left i'm gonna initialize it as well um, it's just for testing purposes so you can see uh, two different scenarios here um, i'm gonna do can dump and zero it'll now play or display uh, messages that are received on my linux machine that's connected to the pecan the pecan and we're viewing your to uh, add a new, mes new message that you want to transmit, we're gonna, we'll just use ID of one, uh, zero, one, two, three. All right, we'll just do, let's we'll call this one testing. Testing one, all right. I'm gonna click pause. You can start it paused or not. For cycle time, we'll put 20 milliseconds, boom. In order to just send a single shot, you can double click it. You have to click it, double click it on the can ID. You click it anywhere else, you start, you just, well, all the way to length. All the way to length, you will get it. So our length and can ID, we'll send it. Data, we'll try to address the data. Cycle time won't work, count won't work, manual won't work, comment won't work. You can only click here or here to get the messages. If you wanna view it, or if you wanna send it at the cycle time, just check the cycle time box and that'll take care of it. And you can double up on it by double clicking on the length or the can ID. I'm gonna click pause here. Um, and I'll clear my screen. All right. I'm gonna, pl I'm gonna play a uh, log file that I have on my Linux machine so we can view data on the PCAM viewer. You can see that we have a variety of messages now in the receive section. If I wanted to essentially copy these to the transmit section, right click copy, paste, and now it's over here. Double click on the data, I can edit it. Uh, this is ID 47. If I was trying to replicate what I'm being, what I'm receiving, if I was trying to pull a device off the network, we would just make sure, okay, it's cycle times 20 milliseconds, so 20. I'll click pause because I'm not trying to conflict any issues and just put ID 47. All right. All right. And there we got it. I can click save here to save what my transmitted messages are. An example transmit. All right. And I'll uh, minimize this real quick and we'll go to the example transmit and you will see that it has the two messages that we are transmitting along with all the data or all the information associated with it, if it's paused or not, and the uh, commented name. Going back to PCAN, if uh, if I want to log um, messages, I can uh, I can log messages here. We'll click record. You can see that it starts building the buffer. It has the ability to build it. What it does is it puts all these in a buffer and then it just saves if you click save. You, can, you have the ability to pause, unpause. Yeah, there was, there was a pause point in the log file. But the ability to pause and unpause for information, you can see your buffer percentage here, uh, how many messages you received, if there's errors, things like that. And then we can click uh, stop. Once you click stop, you can click save, and that'll save it. We'll save that as a trace file. And it's saved. Once we go back here, let's look at the trace file. I'll open it with code. And you can see that the messages are uh, are all there. Also, if you, I'm gonna delete this trace file and we'll do it again, just to show you another iteration of what's possible. I'm gonna click, um, let's set this to, let's set this to two milliseconds, okay? I'm gonna click unpause, well, I'm gonna change the ID as well, so we don't have an ID conflict. We'll do 002, all right, so it's on ID two now. So we're sending messages on ID2. I'm gonna go back to trace. We're gonna click record. I'm gonna click stop, save. I'm gonna click save that as trace file as well. Let's go over here. Let's view the trace file. You can see that my ID 002 
is saved in the trace file as well because it tells me if the message is being transmitted versus received. So it does it does log not only received messages but transmitted messages as well. And that is about it for the basics. You have the ability to adjust buffer size as well. The nine million, that's your maximum value right there. And you also have the ability, if you wanted to log arcs here, change what you're logging, if you're logging error frames, or error counters, log, log events, things like that. I usually leave it to default. And if you had multiple USB to cans, you could play with which device ID it is here. And that is about it. You have recent files and settings, which settings you ID format hexadecimal, data format hexadecimal, data length, um, show data length or show the data length code, um, language English or German, darker windows, those are your options. So aside from that, you can also click stay on top. So anytime you wanna to try to minimize it, it'll minimize the window, but it'll stay on top if I click uh, VS code, VS code won't pop up, if that makes sense. See, it also blocks everything associated, so it'll stay on top. And that is pretty much it for VS Code. Or <laughs> VS Code. That is it for Peak Peak Viewer. Uh, thanks.